In this video, I wanted to provide some graphical intuition as to what it means for a random variable to converge in probability to a constant. So I'm going to use two examples. The first example is just going to be the sample mean x bar. And we know that this is defined as equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. And we know that the expectation of our sample mean x bar is actually equal to the population mean mu. And furthermore, we know that the variance of x bar is equal to sigma squared over n for the case where I have iid variables. And here, if we take the limit of both sides as n tends to infinity, we actually find that the right-hand side goes to zero. So we've actually demonstrated mean square convergence, but we know that mean square convergence actually demonstrates convergence in probability. It implies it. So what does this actually mean graphically? Well, let's draw a graph to illustrate what's going on. So the idea here is that we are comparing the sampling distribution. So you can kind of think about the sort of vertical axis as being the sort of frequency and the horizontal axis as being the sort of values which our random variable takes on. So we can think about what happens to our sampling distribution of our random variable x bar as n gets bigger. So I've tried to indicate here, although I haven't drawn it very well, that we've got a sort of population mean mu, which I've marked on the diagram. And we know that for any sample size, our estimator is actually going to be unbiased. So it's always going to be centered around that particular value. So perhaps this sort of first line which we've drawn here is for a sample size of 10. And then as I increase the sample size, we have a narrowing of this particular distribution. So perhaps this sort of second um, graph which I've drawn here is the case where n equals 100. And you can sort of see that as the sample size gets bigger, our distribution is getting narrower until in the limit that sort of n is infinite, we're actually just going to have a straight line at mu. In other words, our random variable is no longer going to be a random variable. It is actually just going to be a constant. So that's kind of what it means for the sample mean to converge in probability to the population mean mu. Now let's think about another example. So the other example I'm going to use is something which I'm going to call x tilde. And x tilde is quite similar to the sample mean, except it's equal to 1 over n plus 1 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. And it's easy to show that the expectation of x tilde is just equal to n over n plus 1 times the population mean mu. And notice that if we take the limit of both sides of this expression in the limit that n tends to infinity, we have that the sort of left-hand side, we just take the limit of that. And then the right-hand side, essentially this one becomes unimportant in the limit. So we just get left with n over n, which is one. So we have that this is equal to mu. So even though we had bias in a sort of finite sample, as our sample size tends to infinity, we have a sort of removal of this bias. Furthermore, it's very easy to show, just like the case for x bar, that the variance of x tilde in the limit as n tends to infinity actually equals zero. And because of that, we can actually draw a graph of what's going on. So if we just sort of draw our sort of frequency distribution again here, it's going to be quite similar to what we had for x bar, except for finite samples, our sort of distribution is actually going to be centered around a value which is smaller than the population mean mu. So perhaps this particular sampling distribution which we've drawn here is the case where n equals let's say 10 and then as I increase the sample size a bit perhaps the bias decreases a bit and we get a slightly sharper distribution at let's say n equals 100 and then sort of as we increase it further and further our sort of sampling distribution is getting closer and closer to being centered around the true population mean mu and we actually have an unbiased estimator. So note that even though we had bias in a finite sample that the bias was actually removed as our sample size tend to, tended to infinity so we actually have the estimator as being asymptotically unbiased. 
So both of these estimators, even though the first one is unbiased and the second one is biased, we have that in the sort of first case, we have the x bar tends in probability to mu. And also for the second case, we have the x sort of not bar in this case, we have x tilde tends in probability to mu. So both of these estimators are actually consistent. 